Yo, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are celebrating 1,000 subscribers, which thank you by the way. And to celebrate 1,000 subscribers, we're doing two things. One, I'm gonna give you this really cool bass rack I made in Ableton 11 for free. And I'm gonna show you how I use it, break it down, uh, its best uses and whatnot. And then two, we hit 1,000 subscribers. So that means I'm officially going to start the track start to finish series where I'm going to do everything live on stream, which is YouTube live or whatever you want to call it. And then I'm going to re-upload whatever is from the live stream to the YouTube tube to YouTube. And then I'm also going to break down some important stuff uh, and make some mini clips for people that can't watch maybe hours of a stream. This way you guys can watch some important stuff and still take away um, either way you want to consume it, which is in short clips, or if you want to learn the whole process, you can watch it all, which I think is going to be really helpful for a lot of producers. Um, so I'm really excited for it. I have already a song idea in mind for it. And I'm really excited to get started on it. But that is not why we're here for this video. We're here for the bass rack. So if you want basses to sound like or or maybe even then you're probably going to enjoy this video. So Without further ado, let's get into it. Also, you may notice a different background. That's because I did just move. I still am unpacking, but for now, this is kind of the setup. Let me know if you guys like this lighting versus the old purple hue lighting. Um, yeah, just let me know. Anyways. All right, so in this project, as you can see, I just drug some random one shots in. And my base rack that I'm going to show you is quite big. It's color coded, you'll see here. It looks like a lot at first, but I'll break everything down for you guys. Now, I should say that it seems to be a little bit higher on CPU, so I think this should be used as either sound design or if you want to add a certain tone to anything, then you'll add it and then freeze it down because I was working on, I mean, it was a rather large project, but a few instances of this that was kind of running my CPU. So that's just something to keep in mind. Now, how this rack works, we have two parts of it. You have the first part, which is compression styles, and then the second part, which is voicing slash stereo. So this isn't going to make you a bass, but what it's going to do is add all the textures that you want in parallel. So a big thing I've gotten into recently is using instrument racks. So let me let me explain. Rather than just putting like reverb on a bass and then you mix it to taste, what you would do is you'll group it, make it into an instrument rack, and then you have a dry wet. So it's almost like a send, right? So you have your dry here, dry here where you would have zero, and then you'd have your wet, which is 100%, right? So I pretty much did this for all these different stereo effects, which is all the main ones I use on my basses, and you can mix to taste. Now, What's the use for this? Well, A, if you already have a base you kind of like and you just want to add a little texture, great way of doing it in parallel. Another great way of doing this is if you're having a lot of phasing issues in your base and you're not sure, this is where this rack can really shine because you can just plop it into, so you can just pop your bases in mono here. Let me show you through span. So we can see this 100% in mono. If it isn't and we can add our own in so let's start with the rack so let's just start with one chorus ensemble and you can go in and change any of these settings you want i made everything color coded so you know exactly where it is you have chorus right here so let's add it in obviously that's a lot but you can mix to taste and you can even go into chorus and mess with these settings. This is just something, this is a, a warm ensemble that I've messed with a little bit with the feedback and warmth personally, but you can go in and mess with it. And I cut out all the low end and all of these stereo for you guys prematurely. So if you like that, that's cool. If you wanna try erosion grit, which we can, once again, we can go in and see exactly what it is. It's high and wide noise here. So, so if you want that crisp high end, you can do that with this and you can mix and match. Say you wanted a lot of chorus. You can add stuff in. Possibly. 
you want something wider, maybe not as mono compatible, something to fit farther back in the mix, this is great for it. Now, phase flange. Yeah. And you can keep going. Now, I did add a um, overdrive because I do like the distortion and mids and highs. So if you do think something's lacking in the mids, and once again, we can check here, what does the mids mean in this? Well, it means around where the mids are, which is around peak of 1K. So it goes down to about 600 to about 4K. As you can see here, that's highs. You can see that spike. Obviously, you don't want to do that drastically. You would do that where something is missing a mids. Instead of layering it, you could use this as a parallel and same with highs. Now, another cool thing is Spectral Resonator. I really like this and think it's one of the most underrated uh, Ableton 11 things. This is just something I found to fit well. It's not a preset or anything. It just adds a good amount of space. Hybrid reverb. Now, a cool thing about this one as well is you can put whatever sample you want in here and play with the size and decay and get all different types of sound, which is really cool. So add whatever one shot you want in there and then change the tonality completely. Another great thing is Corpus. Corpus is used a lot by like Ray Bolpe and all this stuff. Uh, the one thing you do need to know is where to tune it. So for example, this cymatic shot is F sharp. So we need to tune it to F sharp, which I have a two knob right here. Bada bing, F sharp. Now we can add this back in so you guys can see. We can even go down to F1. I've left it at F or uh, the second and the first. Now the cool thing is, let's just add a little bit of what we want in here. Now, once you have your stereo that you add in, say you're happy with this, sounds pretty good. Now we can go to the compression. All of the compression is after this rack. So whatever you're putting it through, you go through. If you want just a traditional multi-band compression, which is one of my favorite Ableton stocks, you can do that. I'm not gonna blow it out. Glue compressor. Once again, if you want the glue compressor, this is your percentage. It's gonna be your threshold, so if you wanna bring it down and then blow it out. Add that grit if you want. OTT times three, this is just if you really wanna squash your sound. And if you squash it, you're gonna to wanna to saturate it, right? Really loud, sorry. I wouldn't usually just squash things three times unless you're trying to barely live it, but getting anywhere, a little bit in it, and then and add some nice textures to it. You really, you really want to blow it out. Enhance is like the steroids of compression. This is going to blow out your sound. I just wanted to give the option there. Now, and ten percent will do a lot. Let me just give you like it's very intense but if you want to do that and then cut out your low i also made the option in the green here where you just cut out the low end so you can do tons of different styles with all the different compressions you can run this through different stereo and then bring it back with the compression of your choice which is all right here and you can mix and match this so much now i've done this on one sound but we can do it with other ones as well let's do that let's do this okay we're playing mono and this is a good uh example of where mids are at that present so let me add some distortion let me add some chorus, a little bit of Haas, and I'm gonna add a lot of. I'm gonna throw a multi band all the way up. We're gonna give it a little OTT here, saturate it. So before. And now it's just a quick turn of knobs. It's such a powerful tool that you can use to really just add grit add space, add what you want to a already existing base. 
By the way, if you double click all these, they will default back to where they should be. This is a good one. All right, so we're gonna keep it stereo and we're gonna add into it. Remember, this is all mixed in parallel. It's not dry wet. So you're introducing another signal. So your overall volumes will get louder. And this is why compression uh, is very important uh, adding to it. Now, I believe at the end, the saturator is automatically soft clipping at all times. So you're never going to go above. So you'll never be peaking technically because it's going to get squashed. So overall, you can see just you can put it on pretty much anything and it just is going to make your writing process so much quicker. I hope that explains it. Um, like I said, this is going to be for free in the downloads below to anyone that wants it. It is only for Ableton 11 Suite, maybe. I don't know the difference between all the different ones, but Suite is what I have and what it's compatible with. And you can make it your own, change anything out that you want. It's super easy to follow. I made it super user friendly for you guys. So it's just plug and play. Like I said, the only thing that might be a concern is, yeah, it's CPU usage is quite high. Other than that, I appreciate the 1K on YouTube. I hope this tool is useful and I hope you guys show me what you use with it. I'm interested to see the creative direction you take with it. So that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you learned something. Take care. Peace.